beautiful people, welcome to Remy's Fashion. My name is Remy. On this channel, we upload pattern drafting and sewing tutorials. Thank you all for subscribing and supporting this channel. I do not take it for granted. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to draft a Victorian corset. So let's get started. Measurements needed are I'm going to be taking one inch away from my waist circumference measurement. My waist circumference measurement is 38 inches and by the time I take out one inch it's going to give me 37 inches. This is for waist snatching. So the first thing I'm going to do is to draw out a starting point. I will always draw out a starting point to start every project. I'm just going to label it shoulder line. That's SL for short. Even though we do not have a shoulder in this pattern that we're drafting, but by showing it, it will make it easier for beginners to follow along and you can also have a yoke if you want one. I always like to have a yoke for every pattern I make so that in case I need to add a yoke, it's easier for me now, I have the yoke to use. So I'm gonna be doing that with a yoke. You want to use the yoke, you have the yoke. You don't need the yoke, you take off the yoke. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna measure out our vertical measurements. Vertical measurements are measurements from the shoulder to the bust, shoulder to under bust, shoulder to the waist, and then shoulder to the length of my corset. So I'll start taking my measurement from my shoulder. Shoulder to my bust for me is 12 inches. I will measure 12 inches from my shoulder and then shoulder to my under bust is 16 inches. I will mark 16 inches and then shoulder to my waist is 19 inches. I will mark and then shoulder to the length of the, my corset. I want the length of my corset to be 24 inches and then I will mark 24 inches. So I'll do the same thing across just to be sure before I rule a line. And then I will draw a horizontal line across. I'm going to label them. I'm just going to write initials so that we don't get confused. You know which line is which. So this is my bust line. So I'm just going to put bust line BL. This is my under bust. This is my waistline. And this is the length of my corset. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure at my shoulder measurement. My shoulder measurement is 18 inches. And by the time I divide that by two, it's going to give me nine inches. I will measure and I will mark. I'm going to take my measurement on my shoulder line like this. And nine inches puts me here. And I will just mark. I will now measure out the neck width and the neck depth. I would use a standard neckline of three inches for the neck width and three inches for the neck depth. And then I'm gonna create a curve. You can always change this. If you want to use a yoke and you now decide you want your neck deeper, you want it lower, then you can always adjust this. Well, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna be using three inches by three inches. So I'm gonna measure three inches for the depth and three inches for the width. And I'll create my neck curve like this so like I said you can adjust it depending on how you want it for this Victoria corset we do not need this part I will draft it so as to show you the yoke of this corset so that in case you want to have a yoke you already know how to draft one I'm going to slope my shoulder by one inch one inch puts me here I will mark I'm sloping my shoulder by one inch because our shoulders are not straight and then I'll connect this point to the width of the neckline, like this. To create the armhole, and for that, we need our armhole measurement. Or you divide your bust by six and add 1.5 inches. And measure what you get from your shoulder slope all the way. Mine is nine inches. Because my bust circumference measurement is 44 inches. And by the time I divide that by six, it's going to give me 7.33 inches. And then I will add 1.5 inches to 7.33. It's going to give me 8.8333. So I'm going to approximate that to nine inches. So I'm going to measure nine inches from my shoulder slope. Nine inches puts me here. I will draw a line to connect. And then I'm going to draw a horizontal line across like this. 
I'm going to extend it and this is going to be our chest line. I'm just going to put chest line to CL. So that is our chest line. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to create a curve by finding the midpoint of our armhole line. We're using 9 inches. So therefore 9 divided by 2 is going to give me 4.5 inches. I'm going to measure 4.5 inches. And that will put me here. I will just mark and then I'm going to draw half an inch inwards like this. So this is where I'm going to be drawing my armhole curve. So this is our chest line or upper bust line. Mine is 4.5 inches for me to be able to create my curve. Measure yours and divide it by two. Whatever you get is what you're going to input here. You mark your midpoint and then you take half an inch inwards just like I have done here. So the next thing we're going to do is to place our bust span measurement, which is also known as nipple to nipple measurement. Mine is 4.5 inches after calculations. I'm going to measure and mark that 4.5 inches on all my horizontal lines, okay? And I'm going to start from my bust line. 4.5 inches on my bust line. I will just mark. I will do the same thing on my under bust, on my waistline, and the length of my corset. I'm going to also extend this line to my chest line as well. So I'm going to mark 4.5 inches on my chest line as well. And that puts me there. I'm going to rule a vertical line to connect all my points. So I'm going to rule a straight line like this, connect all my points like this. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a horizontal line for us to be able to draw out our neckline. Okay. And then for me to do that, I'm going to measure two inches upwards from the chest line. This is a personal preference. The reason why I want to go up by two inches is because I want to draw out the neckline and I do not want it to be too low. You can go up by one inch or 1.5. This is a personal preference. You can decide how low or how high you want your neckline or or that of your client's neckline to be. I'm going to go up by two inches for the purpose of this tutorial. Two inches upwards like this. And I'm going to be extending this line. I'll draw a horizontal line. So this is a guideline for where I'm going to be drawing my neckline. And then I'm going to extend my bust span line upwards to the neckline like this. The next thing I'm going to do is to draw out my darts. So I'll take one inch on my under bust line on each side, on the waist line, and then the length line half an inch on each side. And then the length line is going to be half an inch on each side. So that's a total of one inch. Because most of the contouring is going to be taking place on the under bust and the waist line. On the neckline, this is the neckline. I will measure one inch on both sides as well. I will now connect using my curve ruler from the midpoint of the bust line to the under bust. Like this. After doing this, I will now do the same thing for the neckline. So I'm going to connect from the neckline to the bust line as well. This is tightening of the upper bust, okay? So all this, this is the dart, is all going to be cut off. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I will now draw the dart legs from the under bust to the waistline and from the waistline to the length of our corset. Okay, like this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot out our circumference measurements. I will start with my bust. My bust circumference measurement is 44 inches. By the time I divide that by 4, it's going to give me 11 inches. I'm going to add back the 2 inches I took from here. That's 1 inch from here and 1 inch from here. That's 2 inches. And by the time I add back that 2 inches, it's going to give me 13 inches. So 11 plus 2 is 13 inches. So I'm going to measure 13 inches on our chest line. 13 inches is going to put me here. And I'm going to mark. I will now plot in my waist circumference measurement. My waist circumference measurement is 38 inches. Remember I said I'm taking out one inch for waist snatching. So that's going to give me 37 inches. So 37 inches divided by 4 is going to give me 9.25 inches. I'm going to add back the 2 inches I took out here. That's one inch here, one inch here. That's two inches. By the time I add that back, it's going to give me 11.25 inches. I will also make provision for another dart 
With Victoria Corset, you can add as many darts as possible. I'm going to add 1.5 inches and that's going to give me 12.75 inches. So calculate yours. You want to make your darts bigger, then you can go ahead and do that. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to be making mine extra 1.5. So that means I will have a total of 2 inches, 3.5 inches darts. So I'm going to measure 12.75 inches on my waistline and that's going to put me here and I will measure and I will mark. Victorian corsets can be cut into different pieces by adding multiple darts. Then my hip circumference measurement is 48 inches. By the time I divide that by 4, it's going to give me 12 inches. And then I'm going to add back this 1 inch, half an inch here, half an inch here. That's 1 inch and that's going to give me 13 inches. So I'm going to measure and I will plot. 13 inches on the length of my corset. 13 inches is going to put me here and I will mark. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw out my armhole. I'm just going to draw out my armhole line. I'm going to connect with a straight line here to the half point. And then from the half point, I'm going to connect with a curve to my circumference like this. I will now draw out our sweetheart neckline. So I'm going to use my curve and I'll connect from this line to the chest line. From this point to the chest line like this. And then from this point, I'm going to connect it to the armhole line. Like this. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect from the chest line to the waistline and from the waistline to the length of our top. I'm connecting from the chest line to the waistline. And then from the waistline to the length of our top. Like this. The next thing I'm going to do now is to add another dart. With a Victorian corset, you can add multiple darts to different places. So for me to be able to do that, remember I made provision of 1.5 inches extra for my waistline and my underboss line. I'm going to measure from my underboss to the side panel and whatever you have divided by two because I want to divide this panel by two and then I will mark and then from there I will draw a straight line to the top this is me dividing the side panel into two I've drawn a straight line down to the length of my corset so I will now create my darts I'll measure half an inch on each side of the underboss and of the waistline. Remember we made an extra provision of 1.5 inches. So I'm going to be taking one inch here and then the remaining half inch on the center front. So I'm going to take half an inch on each side. And then I'm going to connect these points together from here to here and then from here to here. And then I'm going to connect upwards. So I'm drawing like a diamond that and then I'll connect it upwards like this. So this is one inch, one inch, and then this is half an inch, half an inch. Remember that the 1.5 inch provision for the extra darts, I have used one inch. This is half inch here and half inch here. So I have half inch left. I've used one inch. So I'm going to create another dart at the center front. I will measure half an inch inwards at the waistline. So inwards like this, I'm going to measure half an inch. I'm going to mark. I'm going to connect it to the top here and then I'm going to connect to the bottom. I'm taking the half an inch from my waistline. So from the half an inch, I'm going to connect it to the bust line from here to the bust line and then I'll connect it to the length of my top like this. So we have a total of three darts. cutting out the dart. So these areas that I marked are the dart. So we have one panel, two panels, three panels. We have three panels for the front of our Victorian corset. So we have a total of three darts. I have marked the darts in red to indicate where I will cut out. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bust shape to make it curve at the bottom. On the side of my pattern, I'm going to go up by two inches. And then using my curve ruler, I'm going to connect from that two inches that I went up, I'm going to connect it to the center front. Okay, like this. So this is going to give us the bust effect. You can decide to increase it even to make it more dramatic, but I'm using two inches. We'll finish the front of our Victoria corset. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label our pieces before I cut out. I'm going to label this one. This is going to be my number one. This is two. And then this is three. Okay. And then like I like to do, 
I'm going to label left and right, left and right, left and right. So when I'm connecting, it's easier for me to connect. I know this and this will connect together. So this is my left and this is my right. And then this is my left and then this is my right. This is my left and this is my right. So I know that these two pieces will connect together and these two pieces will connect together. Okay? And then I'm going to transfer that as well to my fabric. So number one is my center front. This is my number one and this is my CF. So I'm just going to mark center front and I'll put it like this center front. And then this is my side. I'm going to put it side front. So this is CF. This is SF. So in the case, label them so that you do not mix them up. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add half an inch sewing allowance to the hem. So on the side, I'm going to be adding half an inch sewing allowance as well. I will add my remaining sewing allowances to the fabric when transferring my pattern pieces. On the side, I'm going to be adding half an inch sewing allowance as well. Half an inch. So I've added my half an inch sewing allowance on the bottom and on the side. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to cut out this pattern and then I will show you what it looks like. my Victoria corset this is what I have with the yoke okay so this is what it looks like and if you do not want the yoke like I said you take it out and these are our three panels for our Victorian corset so the next thing we're going to do now is to draft the back pattern So for the back, I'm going to measure out my vertical lines and then draw a horizontal line across just like we did for the front. But for the back, I'm only going to be drawing out my shoulder line, my chest line, waist line, and then the full length of our corset. I'll measure out the length of my corset. And then I'll draw a horizontal line across. And then the next thing I'm going to do is to measure out my zipper allowance. I'm going to be using 1.5 inches. So you decide what you want to use for your zipper allowance. You can use one inch, you can use two. It's your preference. I'm going to be using 1.5. So I'm going to label them. This is my shoulder line. So I'll just put SL. Okay, so this is my zipper allowance. So I'm just going to write zipper allowance. And then this is the length of my the top so that's my full length so now i'll just measure out my waistline so the next thing i'm going to do now is i'm going to measure my shoulder measurement my shoulder measurement is nine inches as circulated and i'm taking all my measurements from my zipper line this line and then i'm going to measure out my neck width and then the neck depth i will use the standard neckline of three inches for the neck width and one inch for the neck depth and then i'll create my curve you can decide to draft out any neckline of your choice this part that i'm going to be doing is the yoke part so you can take that off after you've done it but you have it in case you need to use a yoke Doing this I'm gonna slope my shoulders just like I did for the front by one inch and then I'll connect from that point to the width of my neckline to create the armhole curve mine is nine inches so I'm gonna measure from this slope nine inches down nine inches will put me here and I will mark and I will draw a horizontal line across and this is my chest line or upper bust line and then I'm just gonna extend this line down to the chest line like this 
We will now create the curve by finding the midpoint of our armhole line. My line is 9 inches, and by the time I divide that by 2, it's going to give me 4.5 inches. I'm going to measure 4.5 inches, and I'll put a mark there, just like we did for the front, 4.5 inches. The difference between the front and the back is that the front, I came in by half an inch, but for the back, I'm not going to come in by half an inch, I'm going to connect it to the chest line. And then I'm going to draw out my armhole curve. So from the midpoint, I'm just going to connect my circumference like this. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a line for the neckline, just like we did for the front. We went up from the chest line by two inches. I will also measure two inches from the chest line. I'll go up and then I will draw a horizontal line across. This line is the guide for our back neckline. So I'll measure two inches. And then I'll connect the points. I'll draw a horizontal line like this. Instead of going up by two inches, you can also take your measurement from the top, from your shoulder line to where you want it to get to. So you can take your measurement like this. Mine, for example, now, mine is eight inches. You can do that or you go up by two inches or one inch, depending on how deep or low you want the back to be. This is a guideline for our neckline, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do now is to plot in our circumference measurements to the chest line, waistline, and the length of our corset. My bust circumference measurement is 44 inches. By the time I divide that by four, it's gonna give me 11 inches. So I'm not gonna be taking out that on the chest line. So I'm just gonna measure and mark 11 inches on my chest line. So 11 inches is gonna put me here and I will mark. For the waist circumference, mine is 37 inches. By the time I divide that by four, it's gonna give me 9.25 inches. I'm gonna be adding 1.5 inches that allowance. And that's gonna give me 10.75. And this is what we're gonna be plotting on my waistline. So 10.75, I will measure and then I will mark. That puts me here. Then my hip circumference measurement is 48 inches. By the time I divide that by four, it's gonna give me 12 inches. And then I will measure 12 inches on the length line and then I will mark. Then the next thing you need to do is to draw out your armhole curve if you've not done so already. So you connect from the midpoint of your armhole to the calculated bust circumference measurement. Okay, just like this. The next thing we're gonna do is to create the shaping for the back. You should decide how deep you want the back to be. I'm gonna be going down by 2.5 inches from the neckline. This is our neckline guideline. You can decide you want to go deeper or you can just leave it on your chest line. So I'm gonna measure 2.5 inches down. You decide, this is a personal preference. You can decide to draw your neckline to your chest line. I'm gonna measure 0.5 inches down like this and I will mark and then I'm gonna connect from my guideline here and then I'll connect it to my 2.5 inches. Like this, I just made a curve, okay? You can decide you want to draw a straight line. It doesn't matter, it all depends on what you want to do. But I just want to make this curve, okay? So this upper part now is my yoke for my Victorian corset. So if you do not want the yoke, like I said, you can cut it out now and then finish drafting the other part as your tube. The next thing I'm gonna do is to measure out the bust span measurement to the chest line, the waist line, and the length. So my bust span is 4.5 inches. I'm gonna measure 4.5 inches and that puts me here. I'll do the same thing to the waistline and to the length of my corset. So I have measured 4.5 inches on the chest line, the waistline and the hip line. So the next thing I'm gonna do now is to connect with a straight line. Like this. And then on my waistline, I will mark half an inch on each side because now I want to draw out my dart. I'll just measure half an inch on both sides. And then from this half an inch, I'm gonna to connect to the top on both sides, and then I'll connect it down to the hip line. So this is me drawing out my dart. This one inch accounts for the one inch dart that we added to the waistline. We'll now use the remaining half an inch to eliminate zipper bulge. So we'll now have the full 1.5 inches dart that we made provisions for. To remove the bulge that we usually see at the back, I'm going to measure half an inch at the waistline. So I'm going to draw a line from the half an inch on the waistline upwards to the chest line. You can extend it upwards if you want, but I'm going to stop at the chest line and then I'll connect it from the waistline down to the hip line. That's to the full length of my corset. Like this, okay? So I'm going to do the same thing for the second line so that I will still have my complete 
zipper allowance so this is half an inch half an inch that's one inch and then this is another half an inch so this is the full 1.5 inches that we made provision for on the waistline i'll draw my lines to connect on the side so this is our new zipper allowance okay so when i'm cutting i'm going to follow this line and then i'll cut so the next thing is to create the curve at the bottom of our corset just like we did for the front i'm going to measure two inches upwards from the side and two inches puts me here and then i'll connect with my curve ruler to the center back like this so this is our back corset we're going to have this panel and this panel this is our center back but don't forget to label and don't forget to add your notches before you cut out this is my center back and this is my side back so i'm going to be adding half an inch sewing allowance to the side and to the length line before cutting out you can add whatever sewing allowance you want to have anytime i want to use this pattern for a top then i will increase my allowance Instead of half an inch i will make it two inches that way i have enough to fold in for the hem allowance but if i'm going to be using it for a dress i'll leave the half an inch so that i can join it to the bottom part of my dress the top of this can be used as a yoke if you want to draft a victorian corset with yoke design now you know how to do that i will add my remaining sewing allowances when i want to cut out on my fabric you can indicate it on your pattern so the next thing is for me to add all my sewing allowances and then I will cut out my pattern. So this is our back pattern. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to cut out this pattern and then I'll show you what it looks like. pieces for my victorian corset this is complete with the yoke if you do not want the yoke you can take off the yoke and then you can cut off the armhole part of the side panel and there you have your tube i'm going to be adding all my remaining sewing allowances when i want to cut out on my fabric okay so i'm going to indicate that on my pattern i'm going to let myself know i've already written center back here and then i'll still just label one and two of course i already have my labels center back is on here side back is on here and together we have the front and the back of our victorian corset pattern pieces if you want the yoke then you already know how to draft one if you want just the tube you take out the yoke and you have your tube pattern pieces so this are the front and the back with the yoke and then if you do not want the yoke you take out the yoke and then you have your tube top if you're going to be sewing just the tube cut off the armhole for the back so you have it like this and then it goes all the way to the back so these are our pattern pieces do you want to see the sewing of this victorian corset using these patterns that we just drafted let me know in the comment section below hope this tutorial was helpful if you have any questions or suggestions, I'll be in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. See you in my next tutorial. Take care and God bless.